This is Sail GP, the world's fastest sail racing league. And these aren't just sailboats, they're flying machines, capable of hitting over 100 kilometers per hour. And the athletes powering these machines require some of the best stamina in sport. So what is stamina? It's one of those words that I think we all think we understand the ability to keep going, to push through, but the more I looked into it, the stranger it became. It's not just a part of fitness, it's a part of what makes us human. It's one of those words we all think we understand, the ability to keep going, to push through when we're tired. But the more I looked into it, the stranger the story became. Because stamina isn't just about fitness. From our ancestors running down prey across the savannah to breaking the four minute mile, humans have always been obsessed with the limits of stamina. But what is it really? And is it something you're born with or can anyone train to have it? So let's start with the basics. When we say stamina, what actually are we talking about? Stamina means you've got a good engine and you can go for a long time. Just the ability to keep pushing, keep going. Um, that endurance of just go, go, go. I'm, I'm not going to give up at all and, and I'm going to push to the end. Pretty much pain. Yeah. <laughs> when I do my test, grinding test, it's the most painful time in my life. The worst 10 minutes I know. The ability to produce power and continue to produce that power until exhausted and stamina is the point measured by the point at which you stop, I guess. The key measure here is VO2 max, the maximum amount of oxygen your body can use during exercise. The higher it is, the longer and harder you can go. But stamina isn't only oxygen. It's also about efficiency, how your muscles deal with the lactic acid, how your brain pushes past fatigue, and how your body recovers. Here's the weird thing. Compared to animals, humans are actually terrible athletes. We're not especially fast. We're not particularly strong. But there is one thing we are world champions at, and that is stamina. A cheetah can hit 100 kilometers an hour. A horse can gallop for miles. Even your pet dog will beat you in a sprint. But over long distances, under the heat of the sun, humans win almost every time. Stamina has played a major role in the success of our species today. It's underpinned a wide range of the breakthroughs that have allowed us to be as successful as we are um, by being able to acquire higher quality food uh, through hunting, through foraging. That then fueled the development of the larger brains uh, that characterize our species, which led to the development of innovations, complex social structures that, that ultimately um, put us in the position that we are today. Over millions of years, our bodies have adapted in unique ways to keep us going. There's a wide range of features that we have that make us, um, give us great stamina abilities. They include uh, skeletal features, uh, such as narrowing of the hips, uh, elongated lower limbs, longer legs, essentially make it more efficient to be able to walk and run long distances. We've got various thermoregulatory um, adaptations that allow us to sweat, dissipate heat. And then we've got this um, network of tendons that return energy. Uh, with each step to make it again more energetically efficient. So stamina wasn't just a nice bonus, it was a survival strategy. Without it, we might not have caught dinner. The human race probably wouldn't even be here today. Our endurance shaped not just how we hunted, but the way we spread across the planet. It allowed us to travel further, to carry food, and to outlast other predators. In many ways, stamina is not really part of our biology, but part of our identity. But stamina isn't only about survival anymore. For thousands of years, people have tested how far we can push the limits. The most famous moment, the four minute mile. For decades, experts thought it was impossible. Then in 1954, Roger Bannister did it. And within just a few years, others were breaking the same record. So why did so many people suddenly achieve this record once Roger Bannister had already broken the barrier? So if somebody is on a treadmill and they're running to exhaustion, and they usually have a great big red button they can press, when they're like, I've got no more, you have to stop it right now, I'm utterly exhausted. They can do a muscle biopsy and they can see how much energy is still left in that muscle when our brain has told us we absolutely have to stop. And it's 30%. So when our brain is getting us to stop because we're exhausted, what it's getting us to do is stop early because we absolutely need to save some of that energy for an emergency. Again, it's that survival mechanism in our brain of like, we never want to be totally depleted. 
Sports psychologists now study this mental stamina, how focus, motivation, and even self-talk can keep you going when your body is screaming at you to stop. A lot of what we're doing when we're physically training an athlete is exposure therapy. We're getting them to do something that is a little bit harder than they are comfortable with to give evidence to their brain that it's safe to do so, so that we are better able to get the most out of ourselves in those moments when it really matters. So the drive to break records isn't just about having stronger legs or bigger lungs. It's about changing what we believe to be possible. When it comes to stamina, few athletes know it better than Matt Gottrell. He's won an Olympic gold medal in rowing, which is one of the most grueling events in the entirety of the Olympics. And now he powers an F-50 sailboat, which every single second of strength can change the outcome of a race. And today, he is gonna put that stamina to the test. In the lab, Matt was put through an elite aerobic profiling test on the grinding machine pushing him from gentle warm-up to complete exhaustion, all while tracking power, heart rate, lactate, and oxygen use. Taking blood samples at regular intervals during the test, the maximum amount of oxygen Matt's body can take in, transport, and use during intense exercise is measured. Raise up, come on, all the way, all the way. At his peak, Matt hit a VO2 max of 57 milliliters of oxygen per kilogram per minute, which is a massive 45% more than the average male. The higher the VO2 max, the more oxygen the muscles can use. And more oxygen means more energy for longer, resulting in better endurance and power output. It's an essential metric for grinders powering the F50s. The good thing about those tests is you can't hide. <laughs> like it will tell you exactly what you need to do and exactly where you're at. So uh, for me, it was, it was perfect. Um, and now kind of coming towards the end of this season, I'm looking for a bit of a winter block, I guess, get ready to start next season. It's, it's great for me to just know what to focus on and get stuck into some decent training after the, uh, the European legs now finish. If an average person was to attempt the same test that Matt was doing there, they would be finishing, their, Matt's starting power would be his finish, their, their finishing power. If I was to do that test, uh, Matt started 125 watts, I think I would be pretty close to VO2 max at the end of 125 watts. So there's definitely a, a big training component to this, but at the same time, you need to have long levers, you need to be strong and powerful because you, need, you can have all the endurance in the world, but actually the, the absolute power outputs that Matt's producing are very, very high, and that you couldn't just take someone off the street and be able to do what Matt does. It takes both genetics and a lot of training as well. Uh, training is part of my life, like the, um, training for GP or for rowing or anything, it's kind of a habit that I've, it's been ingrained into me over probably 20 years or so now. So it's um, yeah hard to not have something to aim for. Um, so yeah, I kind of signed up to do a half Ironman early in the year to keep myself busy. Yeah, I don't like doing things by half, so I kind of threw myself into that for a while. And um, that was great fun. And then we decided to cycle from San Jose to Geneva. So it was nice to do that and pick off some pretty uh, iconic climbs on the way. But it was uh, yeah, a great way to get from A to B. and from one SGP event to another is, uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool experience. So are great athletes born or made? The truth is both. Genetics set the stage, but training, recovery, and mental toughness decide how far you can go. You can be born with a better physicality, better like uh, physiology, should I say. The average man has like six liters of lung capacity and that average, an average woman is between four and five. I know for a fact that Tyson Fury, when we measured it, which is why I know these things, is um, was over seven. I think he was about seven and a half. So he's got massive lungs. So he was born to be good at endurance. Even now when he's you know, been retired a year, he can go out and run. He, if you told him to do a marathon tomorrow, run a marathon tomorrow, he would do it, no problem. So he's got that and he's got that innate, but then obviously you, you train with drills, with um, particularly for cardio respiratory type exercise, continuous cardio exercise, and that will improve your lung capacity. So there's loads of things you can do to increase it, but if you're born with big, big lungs, obviously a massive help. Um, is there anything you would say is, is key to improving stamina? <laughs> the only thing that's key is just time, really. Like you can't, you can't beat that, there's no shortcuts. You've got to spend time kind of just pushing yourself a little bit harder every day. It's like 
less than 1%. If you increase just a little bit and push yourself to the limit and not necessarily the limit in terms of exhaustion, but just training your body to get a bit better at dealing with the pressures of longer sessions and things like that and VO2 max sessions and things. It's a, it's a thing you can train. So yeah, it's uh, both mentally and physically, like you can do the sessions, but also your, your brain's teaching your body to kind of deal with these pressures and it, it learns to adapt. So um, I've always kind of been in the mentality that you train hard, race easy. And yeah, the body is capable of, of almost doing much more than you think. And the brain is so powerful in that. So yeah, if you can train like that, you'll, you'll see uh, big improvements over a long period of time, but short term, it's, it's hard to kind of see the gains, but that's what you've got to do. You've got to dig in and uh, just do the hard stuff day to day. You obviously hear about rest and recovery being important in sports in general, but how important is rest and recovery for building stamina? It's actually massive and it's obviously, it's like the science of old has evolved over time and it's becoming things like sleep um, it's and even even hydration, um, how how efficient you, your, your lungs and your breathing for want of a better word, for a better word works. It's more efficient if you're hydrated. If you're dehydrated, you don't actually breathe as efficiently. So there's so many little facts. It's like that, you know, the 1% that we talk about when you're talking about like high level sport. Though all those little 1% can make can make improvements. And it's really just building on what you already have. Christian's approach mirrors what scientists say. Push your VO2 max with intensity, build endurance with volume, and make sure the body has time to adapt. So whether you're a heavyweight champion of the world, you're an Olympic gold medalist rower, you're a grinder in a sail GP team, or you're just trying out for your first park run, stamina comes down to a few key principles. Train smart, recover well, and keep pushing your limits. Stamina is the story of human survival and of human ambition. It's what let us hunt across the plains, build civilizations, and break records once thought impossible. In the end, stamina isn't just about running far. It's about how far we've come as a species and about how far we can still go.